Okay, so I am going to present you with more of my autograph collection. And uh, I'll start with one of the coolest. This is uh, something that was gifted to me by my friend Paul. And this is a signed Carpenter's album, Close to You album. And if you look closely, there's Richard's signature. And if you look even more closely, there's Karen's signature. So it's really special because uh, obviously this wasn't done for me, to me, but uh, it's, uh, it's a cool autograph, just theirs, and my friend Paul gave it to me because he knew I'd love it, and I do, and it has a spot of honor on my wall in my home. Now, another uh, one that was gifted to me by my friend Jenny, Facebook friend Jenny, was a signed <laughs> photograph of Barbara Cartland, Dame Barbara Cartland, most famous for being... Uh, uh, a, a romance writer. She must have written 10,000, <laughs> well, probably about 500 romance mo novels in her lifetime. Her daughter is Rain Spencer, who was Princess Diana's stepmother. Uh, Acid Rain, they used to call her, but that's Barbara Cartland, who was quite a piece of work. Uh, now, I'm a big Dolly fan, as you guys probably know, and this was gifted to me by some friends, uh, a signed Dolly Parton uh, uh, CD. Better Get to Living, one of the best songs she ever wrote, I think, in my opinion. Now, some of these other ones are kind of random. Well, actually, no, these aren't random at all. My friend Jackie uh, gave me these. And uh, my friend Jackie Craig presented me with these. And I'm a huge EastEnders fan, a British soap opera. And this is Kelly Bright and uh, Danny Dyer, who played Mick and Linda on the show. And, uh, and she got these signed for me, Scott and Troy. So um, that's a, uh, a wonderful possession of mine. And even more so, if you guys are EastEnders fans, you'll appreciate this. My friend Ann got this done for me. To Scott with love, Dot June Brown. Dot Cotton is a British institution, a, uh, a national treasure. And she's been on the soap opera for decades. And uh, she is, well, supposedly retired now, but I have a feeling she'll be back received uh, or got in my lifetime. Here's one that uh, that was given to me, Eddie Dew, a Western star. He did uh, B, a lot of B movies. And another star that I'm not to, uh, uh, an actress who was in a movie called Our Town. Her name is uh, Ruth Tobey. And uh, I'm not sure how I got that one, to be honest with you. Another one that I received as a gift, which is interesting because I just, uh, he just died a couple of days ago. And uh, Jim Dury was his name, and he was in The Virginian, and he just died just like four days ago uh, as I'm recording this. So um, that's pretty cool. A couple of uh, munchkins, Emo Kranzer, and uh, I'm not sure if that's with Marcella Clan. I'm not sure she was in The Wizard of Oz as well, but I think they both might have been. And uh, that's Emo Kranzer right there. Another one of the dead munchkins. Uh, I think I talked about Tiny Doll before. Tiny Doll from uh, uh, the Doll family. And she was, uh, they were midgets. They were, and they're from Germany originally, I think. And, uh, and these were the Doll family midgets. They performed in circuses. And uh, they were brother and sister. Brother and sisters. And that's, uh, uh, that's Daisy Doll. And I'm looking at this correctly. That's Daisy Doll, and that's Harry Doll. And they played uh, lovers, actually, in the movie Freaks. And the sister Tiny Doll, I corresponded with briefly, and she sent me this uh, picture of them. I think I might have even showed this one on the last batch of autographs with Harold Lloyd and uh, the Doll families. So that's Tiny on the left, Harry, Daisy, and Gracie on the right. And Tiny also uh, signed this for me, which is them in the movie Freaks. Actually, see, there's uh, Tiny on the set, but Tiny wasn't actually in the movie, which is so weird. But uh, there's Daisy, and uh, is Harry in this picture? Johnny Eck, Schlitzy. I don't even see Harry in this. But, uh, but there is uh, Daisy. No, I'm sorry, there's Tiny, and there's Daisy. I'll stop. So, uh, on to the next one. My friend Kimberly sent me this prize possession, gave me this, and this is an autograph of Colonel Harlan Sanders, 
Kentucky Fried Chicken. And those of you guys that follow me on, uh, on social media know that I'm a big fan. And my friend Taylor actually sent me this as well. And this is a, uh, it was all pre-autographed by uh, Harland, but he actually personalized it for somebody in 1974. And, uh, and my friend Taylor gave me that. But that's Colonel Harlan Sanders. Thank you, Kimberly. I did write Jack Lemon a fan letter, and he sent me back, cut out my fan letter address, and he sent me back this on his stationery. My best wishes, Jack Lemon, from uh, J. Lem Productions was his office. June Lockhart, who uh, a lot of people know from Lassie, and uh, I remember mostly from Lost in Space. In fact, uh, she played Mrs. Robinson on Lost in Space, Maureen Robinson, and for some reason I thought that... Uh, the song Mrs. Robinson was actually about her when it came out because they were out at the same time. And here's June Lockhart. But, uh, but yeah, I got this nice note from June Lockhart. Some of the other ones that I've re I got from uh, different autograph shows, actually this is a fan letter that I wrote to uh, Tom Lester. I wrote as a response to a uh, fan letter. Hello from Green Acres. He played Eb on the TV show. Jesus loves you, Tom Eb. Uh, at an autograph show, I did meet... Peggy Lipton, who signed that to me, and I did speak to her briefly about Sharon Tate, and uh, because they had the same same look and they were on at the same time. Here's the one, the Mrs. Robinson picture. There's Maureen Robinson, uh, June Lockhart. This was uh, given to me, I'm not sure by who, but Dolph Lundgren. I used to be a fan of his. And... Joe Lowe, we were just listening to this. If you're familiar with old gay bar music from the 80s, uh, Patrick Cowley and Sylvester and Paul Parker and Joe Lowe uh, were both uh, uh, background singers. And they had a couple of singles of their own, but uh, my friend Josh gave me that. Lisa Loring, who played Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family. This is a uh, signed to Dearly Departed Tours, Lisa Loring, a.k.a. Wednesday Adams. And... This one uh, is, uh, well, these are Paul Revere and the Raiders, actually. Without, I don't think Paul Revere is actually in this. But Mark Lindsay sold me this. And Mark Lindsay, uh, from, he was the lead singer, sang most of their hits. And, uh, and then I found, and he was selling this picture. And I knew this picture because this was on Cielo Drive. You now, Mark Lindsay lived on Cielo Drive in the house that the Manson murders, the Sharon Tate murders, took place in. He lived there with uh, Terry Melcher, and then he moved out, and Candace Bergen moved in, and Candace Bergen and Terry Melcher moved out, and Sharon and Roman moved in. So I got this from uh, from Mark Lindsay, but I did notice, and I'll put this on the photograph. Uh, this is very distinctive. These uh, this this fencing, because there is a photograph of Sharon Tate shortly before she was murdered, standing in front of this fence. So I had him sign it to uh, Greetings from Cielo Drive, and it was during this time that I met him. He told me that when he lived there, Terry Melcher and he wrote the songs Good Thing and Him or Me in 66 and 67. And, uh, and uh, both were big hits for Paul Revere and the Raiders. And they were composed in the room where the murders occurred. And I told that to Quentin Tarantino and they ended up in the movie. So I will, uh, I'll take credit for that. Moving on. This was a, a phony autograph that was included in a record album of Steve Martin's. Uh, he's not big on signing autographs either in person, as I understand it. He just gave away business cards saying, It was a pleasure to meet you. It meant very much to me. And uh, this is a, an odd uh, a curiosity. This is an invitation for the graduation of the International Institute of the Four Square Evangelism. Sister Amy Semple McPherson was a, uh, a preacher huge in the 20s, and she established the Angelus Temple, which is still there, uh, the Four Square Gospel Church, and uh, she had her own radio station. She was uh, a force to be, she was a force, a religious force, uh, one of the first evangelists, and she disappeared, oddly, in May of 1926, and by uh, six weeks or so later, they decided to declare her, declare her dead. And on June 23rd, 1926, uh, when they were going, they were planning her memorial service, um, it turns out that she was alive. And which is, this is a curiosity because this is dated June 25th. So this is dated two days after uh, she was discovered. I'm sure this never even happened, this ceremony, but it's a curiosity.
Okay, here's an aside for you guys who are enjoying the autograph video, or at least watching it. Uh, we are at Forest Lawn Glendale, and we are behind the great mausoleum. Uh, in this mausoleum, you know, Clark Gable and Michael Jackson, and uh, oh my God, tons of people. <laughs> uh, Sid Groman, Gene Harlow, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, and, uh, and behind it is this grave, which is the evangelist, Amy Semple McPherson, who uh, I just mentioned in my collection of things. I have that document, that invitation to an event that she was supposed to uh, host very close to that time period where she was uh, disappeared. But here's her grave. And the curiosity about this grave is that uh, the rumor has always been that she was buried with a live telephone in her grave. Because she was afraid to be buried alive. It's a great story. Well, these things are made to be read. In memory of Amy Semple McPherson, 1944 is when she died, pastor of the Angelus Temple, founder of the International Church of the Four Square Gospel and LIFE Bible College. Proudly, we pay tribute to this great defender of the faith who proclaimed to the world Jesus Christ and uh, the only Savior, baptized with the Holy Ghost, healer and coming king. Fan letter I wrote to uh, Anne Margaret, and uh, that's obviously pre-signed, but I think that might be uh, legitimate. Uh, she may have signed that, uh, or not. Who knows? I did meet not that long ago Edie McClurg, who was in the movie Carrie, and she was also one of the groundlings with our good friend Terry, uh, Terry Bolo, who worked for us for a few years at Dearly Departed Tours, and still does. This is a photograph that was autographed by a woman named, uh, I think Dora Mass Massini, and she was one of these uh, one of these girls in the Wizard of Oz. We called we called them the Clip Clip Girls, and uh, and that was autographed for me. I think I met her at some sort of Wizard of Oz function. That would make sense. Uh, Kevin Matthews, if uh, you're Chicagoan and you like the Loop, Kevin Matthews was the best, and he still has a great podcast radio show. Alan Melvin, my sister actually, when she was California Highway Patrol, she helped him out of a spot of trouble on a freeway with a flat tire, I think. And she actually got that sign for me, which is pretty cool. Uh, here is Lee Merriweather, one of the Catwoman. The Catwoman from the Batman movie in 66, I think. And Barnaby Jones with, uh, with Buddy Epson. Another munchkin from The Wizard of Oz, Jerry Marin. He's the guy that handed Dorothy the lollipop. That's him right there. He's been in the shop, too. In fact, I will insert a picture here of Jerry Marin visiting Dearly Departed Tours. This is Juliet Mills. She and her sister Haley Mills. Well, Haley Mills was most famous as a child star in The Parent Trap, and Juliet Mills is most famous for being in a TV show called Nanny and the Professor here in the 70s. And uh, there is footage of Juliet Mills and her father, uh, at Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski's wedding in 68. And when I met her, I asked her about it. And she said, well, I said, how did you know Roman and Sharon? She says, well, I didn't. I said, well, you went to their wedding, didn't you? She goes, no, I didn't. Maybe my sister did. I said, no, you did. You and your father did. She goes, no, I didn't. So I got her email address and I sent her the clip. And, uh, but she had no recollection. They do say, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. This is Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy, who was in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And I met him in 2008, and I spoke to him about an odd event that he was uh, involved with. Uh, Montgomery Cliff, the actor, uh, was he and Kevin McCarthy and probably others were having dinner at Elizabeth Taylor's house. And uh, Kevin McCarthy and Montgomery Cliff were both going down uh, the same road afterwards. Uh, Montgomery Cliff was following in a car, Kevin McCarthy in his car. 
And Kevin McCarthy told me that Montgomery Cook was completely sober, uh, not drinking at all that night. And he was playing around when they were going down the hill, like Montgomery Cliff was going to sort of butt him, but you know, bump benders or bumpers or something. And uh, and Montgomery Cliff ended up uh, losing control of his car and hitting a telephone pole and bashing up his face pretty bad. And Elizabeth Taylor, they say, had to dig his teeth out of her out of his uh, mouth when she heard the crash. He went running down, and uh, he was choking on his teeth. But Kevin McCarthy told me uh, in person, and I have it recorded somewhere too that Montgomery Cliff was not drinking at all. My friend Steve Cox uh, got me this, signed by Vic Mizzy. Vic Mizzy, who wrote the Green Acres theme and the Adams Family theme, and uh, The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, this is a, uh, a reluctant astronaut, and uh, Don't Make Waves, Sharon Tate, staple of 60s music in production. Uh, this is uh, Lisa Marie, who played Vampire in the movie Ed Wood, and... Uh, had her sign that to Dearly Departed. Here's a Ed McMahon. I think somebody gave me that. If you saw the movie Cry Baby, John Waters movie, you might remember Hatchet Face. This is uh, this is uh, Kim McGuire who played Hatchet Face in this in the movie. And as soon as the movie came out, I actually wrote her a note. And uh, and as I understand it, this is pretty rare because she got this back. I got this back from her. She wasn't in show business very much longer after that. And she actually was an attorney, and uh, she passed away a few years ago. So I think this is a fairly rare autograph. That's not why I have it, but uh, it's because I wrote her and I was a fan. So that's Hatchet Face, Kim McGuire. This is uh, Adam Twelve guy. Kent McCord, who I ran into at a tire shop when I was getting uh, wheels done for my one of my vans. I did write B. Arthur. I think I might have mentioned her in one of previous recording, and that's a uh, poor signature of, uh, that I got from her. But she wrote back, thank you for your interest in the Golden Girls. I, uh, all the best, Beatrice Arthur. Dal Misik, who is Bam Bam, the voice of Bam Bam, voice actor. This is... Billy Moomy from Lost in Space. Will Robinson. I had the opportunity to, to work on a show in Chicago uh, for a day. It was a rich little live show. And, uh, and I worked the whole day doing uh, set, set, you know, building sets and things like that. I really don't understand why it would have not been that big of a deal, why they needed the crew of people to do it for a Rich Little who's a mic and a stage. Maybe they had to clear the stage, I don't know. But it was an entire day of work and uh, for a Rich Little show and a lot of lugging, that I remember. And afterwards I went up to him and asked him to sign that and he very kindly did. I had the, uh, the opportunity. If you, uh, I'm a huge fan of this show of Pee-wee's Christmas special. Huge fan of this. I think uh, for many, many years, it, I think it still is actually one of the best hours of television ever produced. And uh, a huge fan, and I had the opportunity to uh, speak with, uh, he's not even in this, Lawrence Fishburne. He's not even a guy. But these are all the celebrity guests, Joan Rivers, Little Richard, Magic Johnson, Annette and Frankie. But uh, Lawrence Fishburne is, uh, played Cowboy Larry in this movie. And, oh, there's Grace Jones. She did say, when I asked her about it, uh, she said it was a magical experience. So uh, Lawrence Fishburne was there, and everybody was having him sign uh, autographs of, uh, you know, Matrix stuff. And uh, he was doing a, a stage show downtown, so I went back by the backstage door to talk to him. And everyone was presenting him with... Uh, with Matrix autographs or, or photographs for him to autograph. And I brought out my little Pee Wee's Christmas special uh, DVD, and he was thrilled with that. He lit up, and he, he just thought that was pretty neat. And uh, that was a pretty cool experience to get to meet Cowboy Larry. At various uh, autograph shows, I did have the opportunity to meet some of the cast of the Munsters. And there is uh, Pat Priest. That was back in 90-whatever it was, when I was still working for Graveline, as you can see. I did write Yvonne DiCarlo a fan letter, and I got that from her, which was pretty cool. And then my friend Steve Cox, who wrote a book about the Munsters, got me this, signed by Butch Patrick, by Pat Priest, and by Al Lewis. I, I, would, uh, I wrote uh, Fred Gwynn a letter, but he wasn't responding to a fan, fan mail at that point. 
but Yvonne DiCarlo did. Here's, this is the cast of, uh, of Bewitched. Agnes Moorhead, Dick York, and Elizabeth Montgomery. Now, I did write uh, Elizabeth Montgomery and got this nice 8x10 signed by her. Happiness. And I've met several of the cast over the years, uh, including Sandra Gould, who was Mrs. Kravitz, the second Mrs. Kravitz. Uh, Alice Pierce was the first. She died of cancer, and Sandra Gould took over the role. Here's uh, Dick Sargent, who was the second Darren, unexplained. Thanks for being a fan, in quotes. Uh, Paul Lind, I think I purchased this one actually, Paul Lind who played Uncle Arthur on, uh, on the show. He was only in a few episodes, but he's became such an iconic character. Casey Rogers who played Louise Tate on Bewitched. Here's Bernard Fox who played uh, Dr. Bombay. I think this was gifted to me, Agnes Moorhead. I think my brother might have given me that. So I say, thank you, Rick. Erin Murphy, who played Tabitha. Uh, I got a couple of these from her. And actually, funny enough, I started working with her briefly a few years ago. We made a few episodes of a uh, show called, I don't know, called it Dearly Departed, I think. I'll link them at the end of this thing, but they're kind of fun to watch. And Dick York was probably the most curious. On the back of Dick York's autograph was that and this um it was this drawing that he did love you lizzie don't know quite what that was all about but dick york signed that for me this came with it how's that florence's milk water egg mary and dick moore terry york so there you are. That's my autograph collection for this week. Hope you liked it.